The Rising of the Shield Hero, Volume 6, Chapter 144. Decision. I head towards the f town the female knight told me about. It's close enough to this village to walk there. Ah, it's the Hero of the Shield. When I, heard, when I head to the village, I find that the construction is already underway. Many people are working on salvaging the pre-existing buildings here, and some are starting construction on new ones. Some people stop what they're doing and come over to greet me. I put on my best business smile to meet them. The leader of the group seems to be a youth from the youth village. I've heard about your situation. Have any problems surfaced yet? Well, there's a river and a well nearby, and food circulation is going quite smoothly. If I had to mention a problem, it would be that the management of the personnel is difficult. I see. It seems there have been some disputes over property rights here and there. Hmm. Well, this was a town whose buildings were all destroyed in the wave. What's more, this, the town is undergoing restorations under the supervision of a hero. Some people would probably try to arbitrarily claim some land as their own. Even if they used to live here, the, who's eh, where was I? Even if they used to live here, it doesn't matter. People have anyone, please have anyone without the intention to cooperate leave the premise. <laughs> As I declare this, some people seem to rise to object, but they quickly give up. Also, if you need to extend past the boundaries of the village, feel free to do so. I then begin to consider the possibility of flooding. I will need someone to manage the roads, but I don't think there are many people knowledgeable in that field. Anyway, for now, try to build while focusing on bringing new businesses here and expand accordingly. Also, we will need to build some inns. Understood! No matter how reparation, <laughs> reparations... yeah. Repairs. <laughs> Reparations proceed. Getting business will be essential. They should build while keeping this in mind. Next, we'll need some sort of security force. For now, you're leaving this to the castle's guards, but I eventually plan to leave it to the slaves who wish to fight in the wave. That way, it'll be easier to re uh, reprimand them for excessive behavior. We're getting new applicants who want to live here by the day. It will be troublesome if they start gathering in my village, though. The female knight that was with you spread the rumor... <laughs> he doesn't even know her name. <laughs> the that this village was your actual base of operations. That knight does good work. I should probably ask for her name at some point in time. I can hear hammers pounding away as people resume their work. Also, I agree. He should totally ask for her name. Uh, aren't you a... Uh, ah, ah, aren't you a shield hero kid? Hmm? I turn around to see the old lady from the magic shop coming towards me. Ah, yeah. A lot of people had come here from Ute Village. It's not strange that she would join them. Ah, uh, you're from the magic shop. The shop collapsed, right? Yeah, well, did you come here to uh, here? Blah, did you come here to help with your family? I'm currently helping feed the workers. I see. By the way, how are the repairs in your store going? I don't know when they'll be finished, but they're. <laughs> what the hell is it, voice? I don't know how to do it, old lady. I don't know when they will be finished. That's that's closer. <laughs> but there are quite a few people in the castle town waiting expectantly for its reopening. She probably had some sort of voice before. I don't know. It's like, the more I do this, the less serious I want to get with it. With all the damage done to it, I guess reopening will take quite a while. Though the queen is doing her best to help, the country's manpower and resources suffered a large loss. If possible, I would like to set up shop here for a bit. A magic shop will be an important asset. I'll give you special permission. I am very grateful for your words. But only after we get some usable buildings completed. I'll wait expectantly. Don't worry. Oh, and if you have any free time, could you come to the neighboring village and teach some magic? Some slaves have begun learning from books, but there's a limit to self-study. We also don't know anybody's magical affinities. It will probably be best to ask an expert in the field. Recently, I have been considering constructing a school-like institution. Right now, the slaves are learning combat from female knight and Raftalia outdoors, but having a dojo might also make things easier. For that purpose, it's very fortunate that we have a magic shop close by. I'll think about it once I set up shop. <laughs> what is that? This voice is probably worse than the other one. Well, it, it makes less sense. You're quite a resilient person to take on more despite your current condition. Even though I look like this now, I used to run the largest magic shop in the castle town, you know. Please invite the uh, apothecary as well. It's good for business to have many different facilities. It seems the Hero of the Shield is quite the businessman. Well, I have been called greedy on numerous occasions, and I can use the reasoning of, if it's for the sake of the world, as I please. Of it's for the sake of the world. Right, right. <laughs> the people around us begin to distance themselves. After that, I start to give orders regarding the construction. One week from that, Rishi's level is now 40, and the other slaves begin to uh, uh, will be able to class up soon as well. It's time for us to go to the ca Dragon Hourglass. Right? Yeah. Hour hourglass of the Dragon. Uh, is it just Dragon? 
I feel like it had some longer special name. Fimo and I had already notified the queen beforehand, so all we have to do is go there. So I gather together the higher level slaves and head for the castle town. It's been a while since I last came here. We parked the carriage at a nearby village and entered the castle town by foot. This is because we will be recognized if anyone sees Firo pu pulling the cart. It's been two weeks and the castle town is still recovering. Shield Nichan, why are you wearing a cloak? A slave whose level is second highest Risha is Kiel. Her straightforward personality makes her well suited for battle. She started to be able to coordinate attacks with Raftali and Rishia. Female Knight tells me the, uh, that Kiel has been an amazing fighter someday. Will become an amazing fighter. If I'm found out, it will be become impossible to move. Hooray for the shield, is what people will say as they fence us in. Though I'm a hero, I find that it's quite a pain to actually be treated as one. Is that so? Fido, make sure you don't assume your monster form unless you absolutely have to. Yes. Should I stop by the weapon shop on the way back? I don't have enough money. If I get something too expensive and haven't put it on my tab, I'll feel bad. Though I don't know, I sh if, yeah. Though I don't think I should keep him waiting for too long. I've been slowly saving up, but every day expensive have, expenses have been piling up. I decide to stop uh, stop on by on the way back, anyways. And so we reach to the dragon's hourglass. Hourglass of the Dragon's Era is is what it was called before. Now it's just the dragon. Whatever. We've been expecting you. A soldier who looks quite talkative comes out to greet us. Today, I'm here for my comrade's class up. I'm aware. I received the message earlier. I guess it could still be a female soldier. <laughs> the ceremony starts in the same way it did with Raftalia and Fido. In, I order Fido to assume her monster form. Uh, um, what should I try to try and class up to? Risha looks over at me with a troubled expression. You need to choose for yourself, though there is something here that may choose for you. Fido's Ahoge shows no signs of movement. Fido, yes? If your Ahoge starts moving, you need to get out of the building. Eh? Do you want something like last time with Re Raftalia and you to happen again? Well, I mean, the results worked out, but it wasn't good for the individuals. In order to let them choose their own paths, I need to caution Fido. Oh, okay. I mean, you know, it's good if they get stronger, whatever. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I got Fido's consent. Hey, you, wait for a second. What, Shield Nichan? Just in case, but do you know that we have come here to class up, correct? You do know. Eh. D well, yeah. You told us earlier. The slaves all nodded me. And so, my belief is that you should be the one to choose your own destiny. This is something separate from preparing for the wave. What do you mean, Nichan? I'll give more training to those that personally want to participate in the wave, but we also have to consider what happens after the wave is over. Raftali watches over me in silence. That's right. I started this village with Raftali in mind, but everyone here will also have a life in this world after everything is over. The class you choose here may heighten your abilities, but will also narrow the possible roles you play in the future. Does everyone understand? The slaves nod. I confirm this and continue, continue speaking. Your lives will take you to many places from now. From now. You'll experience many new situations and take on many roles. That's why you should be be the ones to choose your path here. It's not always best to simply have someone pick the routes that gets best stats for you. Can that really happen? I give a heavy nod. Eh. Raftali and Fido here are victims of such a phenomena. The two unenthusiastically raise their hands. Do you see a crest on Fido's head? It arbitrarily decided their class-ups for them, but the class it gave them had higher stats than most normal ones. Really? Yeah, but for you guys, combat abilities isn't everything. If there's a role you really want to do, there should be a class that allows you to specialize in it. There's no perfect class, and among those present here, there are definitely no perfect people, and that's why. And don't just ma eh, make sure you don't regret it. The slaves whisper amongst themselves. I got it, Shield Nichan. I want to become as strong as I can possibly be. If such an option exists, then I don't need a choice. Kiel speaks with determination. The last time she went back to train, she suffered quite heavy injuries and had to be carried back. I want to class up like Rishi and Nechan and lead the others. You don't want... Eh. You won't be the only one taking damage. In the worst case scenario, some may die. I know, Shield Nechan. You have eh, you have a habit of being impulsive. If you screw up here, you may regret it. Don't worry. It'll definitely work out, is what she said. Though her enthusiasm was unmatched, she... Yeah, she put too much focus on a single monster and took an unexpected attack from a blind spot. Her comrades were also quite injured. Shield Nichan, I think this is the first time I've tasted defeat. If I don't do my best, will it turn out like that again? She said afterwards. I had healed her wounds with magic and medicine, but the experience still lingered in her mind. Shield Nichan always protected me, so I never noticed. That fight... Eh, that fighting was such a scary thing. What do you mean Shield Nichan always protected you? Like, when does he ever go and fight with them? He sends them out to fight while he deals with all the business shit because he's still healing. 
whatever. <laughs> In the end, it's fine because no one died, but if anyone, I guess, I guess he's healing her now, so that's what's protect- what? <sighs> whatever. It's fine because no one died, but if anyone were to die under your watch, you'd feel a great pain than any other. Feel a pain greater than any other. Yeah, Nichan, I'm sorry for looking down on you until now. I'll go tell the others. I thought that it was supposed to be difficult to teach them discipline, but they went and learned it before I had even noticed. And that experience gave everyone a lot to think about. It seems that Kiel cried a lot, cried that night. Kiel still bears the scar of that incident, but the experience she gained outweighs the damage. After seeing Kiel's squad come back with injuries, the rest of the slaves also begin to develop a fear of fighting. They become more diligent and have begun to develop tactics. If Raftalia hadn't been there to rescue them, who knows what would have happened to them. Even I understood that it was being too light on them, but it seems Raftalia and the others were harsh on we're harsh on them to compensate. Raftalia is suppose, eh, supporting me in many ways. The boy next to Kiel steps forward. I want to pick my own future. I understand. Please split into two groups. Those who want to choose and those that don't. Slaves follow my orders and divide themselves. Now then, Fido, I'll have the people that don't want to choose go first, so please back off when those that do step forward. Yes. Rishia, what will you do? I want to become stronger by my own hand. If it means giving up my choice, then I don't need such an option. I had anticipated that Rishio would pick that. She came with me for this sole purpose. Then it's fine. Pick a class that suits your tastes. Yes! The hourglass begins to shine, and Rishio closes her eyes. The soldiers in the area surround the, surround the hourglass, and liquid begin to flow into the grooves of the floor that formed a magic circle. The hourglass glows brighter, and the circle on the floor begins to shine with it. Rishio's class up menu appears in front of me, but I close it. Hmm? Fido fidgets with her a hoge, so it won't act up like last time. Okay, Rishio. It seems that there are no problems. Oh, okay. Rishia begins breathing slowly and reads through the list. The light begins to converge on her. I've made my decision. Hey, everybody, get to class up to choose a job. Get to live a life. Uh. Yep. <laughs> Even though. I mean, they're not that important. They don't really have names. <laughs> One of them has a name. I do really like that about this story. It's like the important characters have names, relevant ones kind of don't. <laughs> I mean, no, it's all just based on, like, what now Fumi cares about them and just whether or not he's cared to learn their names. Because <laughs> he's just that kind of person that he doesn't he doesn't remember names. And this is told from his point of view. And from his point of view, he just, he just doesn't remember people's names. He doesn't care about people's names because he just doesn't care about people. He just remembers people by, you know, like, traits, like female knight. Or uh, old man at the weapon shop, or the um, the old lady that worked the the, the magic shopkeeper, or uh, or the fucking accessory accessory uh, dealer guy. They never learned any of their names, but I'm pretty sure the girl with the pink hair up here is the female knight. I think it's either like the female knight or the queen. I don't I don't actually remember. I think that's the female knight though. I think, not positive. <laughs> 